What are we looking at today? I need you to pay attention. Open your ears and listen to this very important thing. Now you remember the elections, the by elections that happened recently. And you remember that an MP was slapped several times by a security personnel. Yes. Now you will remember that we were exposed as a nation on that day when people acted very, very unprofessionally. When people with no training at all as to how to handle a gun were given guns and the civilian was at the, at the mercy of these unprofessional gun-wielding tax. Now these unprofessional gun-wielding tax did not only go there with their big macho bodies, but they were also maxed. They were maxed so that they could not be recognized as if it was a war zone. Now they contended at the Emil Schultz hearing and investigation, better still the committee, that they were not trained to hold guns. Some were not even trained at all whatsoever. And the Emil Schott Commission came up with some recommendations. And one of those was that the gentleman who slapped Sam Jata, honorable member of parliament for Pram Pram, Ningo Pram Pram, should be prosecuted. Some other people were recommended to be prosecuted as well. Now the government has refused and has turned down the recommendations of the Emil Schott Commission. Now I am going to read something from My Joy Online. And it says, Full Government White Paper on Schott Commission Report. And I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs so we can go into that. Joy News has obtained a complete copy of government's white paper on the Justice Emil Short Commission report following its inquiry into the Ayawaso West war gone by elections. Government in its response said the report failed to address the first and most critical of the terms of reference of the commission, which was to make a full, faithful, and impartial inquiry into the circumstances of and establish the facts leading to the events and associated violence that occurred during the Ayawa Soweth Wagon by elections on the 23rd, 31st of January 2019. The government said since the commission failed to do this, it is unable to accept only the findings of the commission. Listen. The government set up a commission headed by a lawyer of high repute, Justice Emil Schott. Now the commission sat down, drank tea, took allowances, at the expense of the taxpayer. They sat in air-conditioned rooms, drank tea, drank mineral water, ate lunches, breakfasts, and suppers, and took money for tea and tea, and so on and so forth. They sat for several days. Now they presented a report to the government and some of the recommendations were that one the gentleman who slapped the MP contended that if he had known he was an MP he would never have slapped him my question is so even if he was an ordinary person 
would you have slapped him? Do you have to know what I am before you consider who I am? Somebody doesn't understand this. Does it matter what I am as opposed to who I am? First and foremost, I am who I am because I am a human being. Now I am what I am only comes after who I am. Are you coming along with me? First and foremost, consider me as a citizen of this nation. First and foremost, consider me as a citizen of the earth. First and foremost, consider me as a human being. So if I was not an MP, you will never have apologized for slapping a civilian whose life and whose security was in your hands at the time you decided to meet out hot macho slaps on the cheeks and the cringing brows of an MP. Now the government in power that created the job for the boys, macho boys who supported them during the elections, macho boys who cannot speak a word of English, macho boys who were unqualified to hold guns, Macho boys who dressed as if they were going for the Biafran war. Macho boys who dressed as if they were going for the World War VI. My God, wielding automatic weapons, weapons of cruelty. The government in power, headed by a human rights lawyer, who I prefer to call a dehumanizing lawyer. Because if you are a human rights lawyer and people were slapped hook, line, and sinker, there was a slapping parade, a slapping expose, a slapping spree at Ayawaso West Wagon. And the government in power says, We are not going to prosecute anybody. Who after all, these are our own boys. They are our macho men. And we have created jobs for the boys. They are national security. Right now, any Tom, Dick, and Harry, and any, the only thing you need to be able to eat from this government in power. And maybe the other government that came before this one is to go to the gym, build your body, and you'll be considered national security. You will be given guns even though you have not been trained as to how to handle those guns. You will dress as if you were going for the Vietnam War. My God have mercy. When you watch the video and see how macho men were slapping people and firing shots just like that, my brother, my sister, you realize that we are doomed under this government in power. We are doomed under Nana Akufu Adu. No respect for education, politicking with the children's lives when it comes to education, politicking with the poor people in this country, pretending to be fighting corruption, and now it is so clear that it is a baton race of corruption for the government in power. Baton race of corruption. One man just ends a race of corruption and then he has over the corruption baton to the next corrupt official under the government to start another relay race. That is what is happening in this country right now. And I hear Mr. President is going to be awarded in New York for what? For what? For what? For collapsing local businesses in this country? For pretending to fight corruption when corruption is unprecedentedly high? Astronomical heights? He is going to be awarded for pretending to fight corruption even though there is an attorney general, there is a special prosecutor on top who is fast asleep in his one million star hotel. 
claiming that he doesn't have enough to work with. Now they claim they provided everything. And up to now, we are waiting for a cockroach to be prosecuted. Two years gone by. Archie he says, oh, two years is not enough for the president to do anything, to change this country. Hallelujah to the bongo clippings. Thank you, Ochini. But we wish we knew this before your cousin came as the president. With all respect, if you are told us two years is not enough for my cousin to be able to change things in Ghana, I am sure at the elections that we would have decided if we needed a man who needed 100 years to change Ghana. It is very saddening. Very sad. Two days ago, a gentleman called me from Takwa. And he told me, listen, I'm a die-hard member of the NPP. But I will never, ever vote for the NPP. And I said, listen, I'm not interested in politics. I don't want to hear NPP and DC. I just want to see the country move forward. I don't deal with NPP, no NDC, no nothing. That is not me. I don't. Whilst people are busily running after government officials to help them do this and this, I don't do that. I don't run after no government official. That is not my duty. I don't do that. I don't need anything from no government official. No, sir. Because the more you run after government officials, the more you keep them corrupt. Even things that your salaries cannot deal with, you start running after them and push them. Because they are already gullible, they also jump onto the bandwagon of corruption. Listen to me, countrymen and countrywomen, and of course, country children. Mr. President is going to get an award in New York. I don't even know what award it is, but whoever is giving that award, shame unto you. Shame, 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 shame. A man who says he's fighting corruption, yet corruption is astronomically rising geometrically beyond arithmetic. Oh gosh. They decided to bring children, school children, all the way to the Black Star Square. As if we were in primitive times. Computer failed. So people now have to come physically. Eh? And Q, right there, I think it was in the days of J.J. Rollins, when we all queued at the people's shops to be able to get alikama and milk powder. Alikama is wheat. Some of us are too young to remember those days. But I remember when America was sending us wheat and oil in the early 80s, when we were all dying from hunger. What a shameful period that was. And remember the rolling chain. Some of us are too young to remember that. When we all became nothing but skeletons, walking skeletons in this country. When our fathers and mothers ran all the way to Nigeria and they were kicked out of Nigeria by Shagari, Shehu Shagari, because Ghanaians had also kicked out Nigerians earlier from Ghana. So Shehu Shagari, Shehu Shagari, in fact, decided to retaliate. What are we talking about, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow countrymen? Can't you see that these politicians are taking us for a joke? You have decided to put the justice Emil shot. Commission. To deal with this issue and see what is happening right now. After spending so much money, drinking all the tea, no wonder these days, if a committee has been corrupted into konum tea. A konum tea. You sit in air conditioned rooms powered by the taxpayer. You drink mineral water. And at the same time, you eat and drink three or four times before the committee meeting ends. 
And those who come there to testify, or those who come there to be investigated, whatever you want to call it, when they are going back, I believe you give them some sort of TNT. How about those who come to interpret? Hey! It is terrible. Now, after the committee, or the commission, whatever it is, has finished the government in power says no. The same thing President Muhammad did, and he lost the elections woefully. When some people were held up and locked up, he decided to free them. As against every thought and advice and counsel. He refused. And they started to free them after all. They were his party boys. Now you free the party boys. You lost the elections. Now you are crying. Check these things out. You went out there. Dealt with all these people. Freed them because they were your party boys. And that was it. You lost the elections. And now these are the people, macho men, who are the so-called national security holding guns that they were not trained to hold. Where are we leading this country to? I see in primitive times, you brought so many school-going children to come out there and collapse. And your minister could only say, that they staged all those things. They were bashed there to the event. So if you have the evidence, why don't you prosecute? What kind of a country is this? Anybody can just allege very serious allegations and go scot-free. As if we live in an animal farm. The other day somebody said, I know where the Takrabi girls are. And I would only say it if the president tells me to, to, to. Now another person is also saying, President Mahama killed J.B. Dankwaedu, former lawmaker. And we are all sitting here, sleeping, laughing. Laughing. Where is the country going? If I was the president of this country, these people would be taken to court straight away. They should be able to give us evidence. With no evidence, then we will see where we can go. So that when people, do people speak like this in America? Do they speak like this in England? Do they speak like this in Holland? Make wild allegations and because they are untouchable, they continue to walk around free. I cry for this country. A whole commission has gone to sit on something, spending the taxpayers' money. And then government white paper says what? So the MP was slapped for free. That's okay, go. Imagine the MP2 try to slap back. By now, would have been buying coffins. Thankfully, the MP realized that the towering figure standing in front of him was not something to be toyed with. I'm sure it was if it was General Mosquito who had slapped Sam Jatta, he would have slapped back. But that guy towering in front of him, holding a gun, he dared not raise a finger. Thankfully, nothing of that sort happened. And we are not buying coffins right now. Let me dash away this. Well, I was so happy at the beginning of the whole thing when the government said, well, we're changing the syllabuses and we're changing the curriculum and so on and so forth. Because we all know that our educational system here it's not really helping us. They introduced the JSS and the SHS. Well, we're looking up to the fact that, well, people will get more practical with their knowledge. It didn't really work too much. And now, they said curriculum would be changed. Syllabuses will be changed. And what am I hearing? That some people who used to provide some textbooks for the school for all these years are saying that oh the change of the whatever is so sudden 
and for that matter they are begging the government in power to allow them to finish selling the books that they produce years back because they still have a huge number of quantities yeah brother my sister are we serious as a nation you were producing a certain textbook you produce both textbooks and maths and you were supplying the schools year after year then all of a sudden the government realizes that no we need to take a new trend and therefore immediately we have to stop and produce other textbooks and all textbook producers are saying no please it's too sudden give us another two years or so to exhaust it's like you are eating poison you've been eating poison all these years and now the doctor says hey you've been eating poison this is what is responsible for your ill health stop eating the poison immediately and start eating this food he said oh but i still have a lot of the poison left oh i bought a lot just yesterday let me just finish eating that poison before i start eating that is what is happening right now government says no we are changing all the names of the subjects we are changing the curriculum we are changing the syllabuses we are changing whatever i grew up at a time when my mother was a teacher teacher of over 40 years and she would always write lesson notes let people pronounce this word after pronouncing it three times let people say this let the people say pupil as in p-u-p-i-l how many teachers still write lesson notes how many teachers still write lesson notes i don't want to go too much into that the government in power said let's deal with the education differently which i applaud that is good congratulations mr president congratulations the minister of education congratulations the ge has got education service and i hear some teachers are, are saying that well they will not teach after the new textbooks come hallelujah you won't teach until the next the new textbooks come hallelujah hallelujah so what is your head doing your head is supposed to be that new textbook your head is supposed to be that new textbook you are told what to teach you are a teacher because you know what to teach and you are told that this is what and you are still waiting for a textbook before you can teach what the country I pray that as you wait for the textbooks to come we will wait until you start teaching before we pay you your salary also let your salary be on hold just as you have put your chalk on hold with all respect I love teachers because I'm a teacher myself my mother was a teacher my father was a teacher my whole family every member of my family has been a teacher at one point or the other and as i speak right now in fact my two sisters are teachers at the university teachers they teach me myself i'm a teacher i respect teachers but when teachers stoop so low to make it look like they have no brains until they see some textbook in my days yes we are textbooks but we are teachers who walk in the class with no textbook and they spilled out powerful information which we wrote down do you remember those days when teaching was so beautiful i never liked teachers who came with textbooks open the textbook and read from page one to page hundred you will fall asleep after the first 11 minutes that is why even in america when i was teaching there was not a day that i went into the class with any book no sir i'll do my homework well i'll keep the book somewhere in my back just in case i missed a line or two i could do a quick recovery of the information let alone it never happened to me 
Everybody has a word they teach. I'm not against any teacher who goes into the class with a book. That is your style. But I'm only telling you the kind of teacher I like. I like that one who will sit throughout the night, go through his notes or her notes, get everything right there in the head, and come into the class like a soldier at war, prepared for battle. Not a teacher who cannot teach if there's no textbook. Not a teacher who is always looking at the textbook, opening it left, right, and center. They ask you a question. You have to get back into the textbook in order to provide an answer. In these days when we cannot, we easily have Google, then the, then the students are better off with Google. Think about it. My dear countrymen, we are not angry enough for change. These politicians continue to play us around like Charles Kelly. You set up a committee, or better still a commission, for people to go and eat breakfast, lunch, and supper, and even carry home to their families, drink tea, drink water, chew things, break bones, carry home tea and tea. And at the end of the day, there is a big brown envelope which they quickly slip into their bags. And then you tell me you cannot accept because it doesn't favor your boys. Hallelujah. I appreciate you, Ghana. I appreciate you, people. Open your ears. Remember that they are because you are. Better still, remember that they are because you were. If you did not vote them into power, they will not be able to play you around like Charles Kelly. If you were judicious with your votes, I am sure every time politicians would give you some kind of respect. Now you only get respect when it's election time. And right after election, they spit it into your face and tell you, you cannot do anything. It's only the president who can do it. Who made the president? Who voted the president into power? If there's anybody to disrespect at all, it is you, that dirty politician, whose mind is to make money no matter what. And what am I hearing that Apostle General Kuranchi Ankara, a man that I respect so much, that he said what? That all those who are going to follow Mahama back into the government. So it means, first and foremost, that Mahama is returning to power, right? Let me not even go into it. And that those who are waiting for Mahama to come back into, the, into power, and they will continue their stealing, that may they die before 2020. Oh, Apostle General, is that the best prayer you can say? Is that what the Bible says? You know the Bible so well. I expected something different. Is that the only thing you can wish for these people? I thought you would have rather prayed for them to repent and turn a new leaf so that at least they can come to your church and give you tithes and offering. If they die, they can't resurrect and come and give you tithes. So maybe you forgot, Apostle General. Please pray again so that they will convert and turn a new leaf and then find their way to your church and then they can now pay tithes and offerings to enable you go to the Tamali prison Kumasi prison Insawan prison and do the church work and which way my name Black Rasta I appreciate you Bye. Thank you Father no matter how loud the cry of the orphan is, nobody seems to hear. Let loose. Nobody ever talk for you, man. Fire, fire, fire. Oh. Fire. 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 F